Okay, let's run through the warm-up exercises. So we're going to start at the head or top of the body, work our way down uh, from the wrists inward down to the bottom. There's not many, just a few to limber up and warm up the muscles and loosen the joints. So we're going to start with the head and neck. The first thing we're going to do is to tuck the chin in slightly. When you tuck the chin in, I'd like you to feel that you lengthen the back of the neck slightly, like you're opening the bones in the neck, so that the, the bones are not compressing into each other, more that they're extended and open. This takes pressure off the discs, makes the, uh, makes the warm-up exercises more effective. For the, the ringing or twisting and stretching that we're going to do, it helps to release the muscles either side of the spine, in particular in the neck for this instance, to, um, if they're tight, to open up, stretch out. That will allow the vertebrae to open up more and take pressure off the discs. It'll also keep all the muscles limber, well lubricated and functioning well. So we start off tucking the chin in slightly and then we're going to turn the head from side to side, feeling a gentle stretch through the neck. Keep thinking about drawing the chin in and keeping the back of the neck long. Now we're going to go forwards and backwards. I want you to uh, feel, as well as pulling the, the chin in, you pulled from the crown point at the top of the head, and that this crown point is going to pull up as well as back, opening the bones in the neck again, and then up as well as forward, and come back. So feel pulled from the crown point, each time you move forwards and backwards, open and extend the bones in the neck. And then lastly for the neck, we're going to go side to side, what we call year to shoulder. Same again, be pulled from the crown point, be pulled up and over to the side. Try and place your ear on your shoulder. Feel as if you're opening and extending the bones in the neck. Gently stretching out the muscles, taking the pressure off the discs. Then we come into wrist circles, nice big circles with the wrists if you can. And then we change direction. So while you're doing this, you should feel that after a, a little while, the muscles in the forearm and around the wrist begin to ache a little which means that you're using them well. They won't be used to moving. So the more you do it, the more they'll start to ache slightly. That's good. Shows that you're using them. They'll get used to that. You'll be able to do more and more. Okay. From the wrist circles, we come into a, an exercise I call the Egyptian. Um, the Egyptian. It's good for the shoulders and arms, mobilizing the first rib. So we start off, I'm just going to turn to the side slightly, twist the little finger edge up with my front hand and twist the thumb edge over with my back hand. Then I'm going to turn to the other side and twist the palms through a full circle. Keep turning from side to side, twisting the palms. And as you do that, extend the fingers out to the sides. Keep them gently reaching towards the walls. So you feel a light ringing sensation through the arms, from the shoulders to the fingertips. And 
amaze the Egyptian. And from the Egyptian, we come into shoulder circles, nice big circles with the shoulders. And as you follow, try not to confuse the arms with the shoulders. So if you look at my shoulders now, you can see them moving. But here, you see, not my shoulders moving. It's just my arms from the elbows. There's nothing happening here. It's all happening here. So we want all the muscles around the shoulder girdle to be engaged in that rotation. And then we change direction. And once we've done forwards and backwards, we're going to do one forwards and one backwards just to start. That looks like this. Yeah, so if you pay close attention, you can see that my left shoulder is moving backwards. My right shoulder is moving forwards. Unless it's the other way around on the foot. And then we switch that. Go the other way. So while you're doing that, a couple of things to notice. If I do both shoulders backwards, alternately, it looks like I'm doing the backstroke in the pool without the arms. So it looks like I'm doing this, but without the arms. That's not it. Okay. This way, it's both forwards at different times, so it's alternate forwards. That's kind of like I'm doing front crawl, but without the arms. And that's not it either. So what we're after is one forwards and one backwards at the same time, which is this way. And what that does, what, the reason we do it, is that it breaks up tension across the back of the neck and allows the energy to flow more freely by releasing the tension there. Okay. So that's uh, shoulder circles, forwards, backwards, one forwards, one backwards. Now we're going to stretch the arms out. You reach your arms out to the sides, pull the fingers back in towards your head. Now keep reaching the arms out as if you're pushing the walls out gently with your palms. While you pull the fingers back towards the head at the same time, and you should feel quite a powerful stretch here, running through the fingers and the palm, up through the inside of the arm. And then we relax. And again, reach up, pull the fingers back in, keep reaching out through the palms. Feel that stretch. It's not only good for the muscles, tendons, but for the nerves, blood vessels and the meridians. We relax. We do one more. And relax. Shake the arms a little as they've had a bit of a work out there. Powerful stretch. Then we're going to rotate the spine. Okay. So while you do this, try and keep your toes, knees and pelvis facing forward as much as you can. And rotate from the spine itself and the body. So that as I turn this way, what I tend to do personally is to move this hip forward opposite to the direction. So if I'm turning to my left, I'm actually pushing my left hip forward a little to save me rotating and collapsing the knees and using the hips. Notice that when I collapse the hips and knees, I'm not actually rotating the upper body, and it's the upper body and spine in particular that we're looking to do that. If I keep everything in the lower part forward, then you can see the kind of stretch and twist through the upper body. So my shoulders are coming around, but my pelvis is more or less staying facing forward. It may twist a little, which is okay.
but you don't want to you be using the hips and wrenching the knees off the feet. Wrenching the knees is something we'll come on to later on, particularly in the Taiji side. And from here, we're going to stretch over to the sides. So we're going to lean the body over to the side. Don't lean forward. Lean directly to the side. Okay? Like you're standing against a wall okay, and you can't lean forward. Then you lean over to the side. I like to use the weight of this arm to help pull me over. Ideally, what you're aiming for is to get this hand, the palm of this hand, level with the knee. Okay? And then we just switch sides. Go from side to side. And what you're looking to feel here is all the side of the body here opening up, stretching out. May feel a little tight at first, but and that's why we're doing the exercises to help free up the rib cage and the muscles between the ribs. It's the intercostal muscles. Uh, I don't like to use too much anatomical uh, jargon. Okay, but the thing is, the muscles between the ribs being a little tight, the rib cage can't expand very well when you're breathing. So we're opening and stretching. So the ribs are kind of like an, an accordion. See the ribs of an accordion, they stretch and open, squeeze back together, stretch and open, squeeze back together. On the previous exercise, as we're rotating, it's also helping to free up the rib cage and the spine, but through a rotational plane. Okay. And now that we've done rotating side to side, we're going to do forwards and backwards. So to do that, I'll turn to the side a little. We're going to try and make a C shape of the spine going forward and then reverse that to go backward. All the way through I'd like you to try and feel that you're opening and extending the spine to make that C shape. We use the head and pelvis as well to help with that formation so that as I curl my spine I'm going to drop my pelvis and tuck it under and at the same time I'm going to pull the head and tuck that in. I'm also going to bring my arms around to the front to help me round and curl the spine as much as possible. Then I'm going to reverse that, curl the spine back, feel as if I'm being pulled from the crown, from the pelvis, and open the spine. And then forward as you breathe up, backward as you breathe in. Forward as you breathe out, backwards as you breathe in. Always try and focus the movement in the spine itself. Remember, you're trying to make that C shape. Making use of the pelvis and the head movement to form those little loops on the seat as you push your lower back up and feel that the head pulls up, the pelvis pulls down with the result that it opens the whole spine as you curl. Same again as you go back. Okay. All right, that's the last spine exercise. So um, from there, we go into hip circles. So I tend to like to rest my hands on the hips, but you can have them down at the sides, whatever is good for you. Feet around about shoulder width, pointing forward, parallel, and then just circle the hips. Feel as if your head is above your feet and your pelvis circles in the middle. Then we change direction. Go the other way. And then 
then we switch one more, circle a little bit bigger. And switch again. down to the legs so in the class is um, <clears throat> stand with the feet shoulder width and parallel the legs are straight but not locked you're going to keep the hollow in your lower back so if I turn this way you've got a natural hollow here you want to keep that so we're going to bend forward but we're going to do it by tilting the pelvis and to do that we lift the tailbone straight up to the ceiling as we lift the tailbone straight up, notice I'm keeping this curve here. And you feel that stretch through the back of the legs. If you want to stretch a little more, lift the tailbone straight up to the ceiling. So you tilt in from the pelvis and that will stretch everything through the back here. That's another powerful stretch. And come back in. And then we uh, stretch out from the inside of the legs. So as we step out, I'm going to have these toes pointing forward. These toes out to about 45. Bend this leg and straighten this one. This is the one we're stretching. So we've done the back of the legs. Now we want to do the inside of the legs. So we gently stretch out until we can feel the stretch through the inside of the leg here. And you can hold that for a little while. And then you can change sides. Turn these forward. Toes out. Put the heel in. Stretch out. Feel the stretch on the inside here. Try and keep the pelvis between the feet. Vertical spine. If you're going to go lower Try and keep this verticalness here. Okay. Don't stick your backside out as you go forward. Okay, that's just a counterbalancing. Better to keep good posture and alignments with the pelvis between the feet, the vertical spine, and the head balanced. So if I want to go further down, yeah, I can go here, but I'm still nice and upright. I haven't pushed my backside out and I have to lean forward like this. Okay. Do that a couple of times each side, and there's your warm up done. Okay, enjoy. Okay, the warm up exercise I deliberately left out and left till the end is the balance in the bowls of soup exercise, because that's the one that seems to cause people most problems. So the idea is I've got a nice white t shirt on, I know it's blue, uh, but I'm going to imagine I've got a white t shirt on and it's pristine got two bowls of tomato soup, one in each hand, and I'm going to spin the bowls of soup around, try and keep the t-shirt nice and white without getting any soup on it, and we, we're going to spin the hands both ways, okay, so to start with, I'm going to tuck the fingers in, move out to the side, okay. still trying to keep that bowl balanced on my palm, spin it around, bring it back to the front. Same again on the other side. Tuck the fingers in. Come around. Relax your arm as much as you can. Allow the shoulder, elbow and wrist to be soft and supple. Tuck the fingers. Sweep it around. And down to the front. Tuck the fingers in. Sweep it around and out. Over the head or shoulder. Down to the front. So, in a bit we're going to reverse this and go the other way. And remember, you're aiming to keep the palms parallel with the floor, as if you do actually have a bowl of soup resting on your palm. If I do this, it's gone. Okay? But you may find as you go in around that you don't quite have the mobility yet. 
and you know this kind of thing happens well that's okay as long as you have the feeling that you're trying to get this okay, you'll be doing the work because you'll feel it working into the wrists the elbows the shoulder okay. so it's going to get into all the little nooks and crannies through the arm and working up to the shoulder from the wrist so that it opens everything up and loosens everything up more. okay to go the other way I take the bowl across my body and offer it out to the front decide I want to keep it for myself pull it in turn the fingers in towards the head and forward lift the elbow and scoop the bowl around and to the front across the body offer it to the front Pull it in at the side of the head, turn the fingers in and forward, lift the elbow, scoop the bowl around. What I'd like you to notice as well is that as I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep my head and spine vertical so that all the movement is transferred into the wrists, elbows and shoulders. They have to do the work. I don't want to compensate in any way by leaning my body or twisting my head. So you may find that if I get to here, I'll start to lean and do this okay? because my shoulder doesn't quite yet have the range of motion or mobility and flexibility that it needs I'll compensate by shifting my body and my spine try as much as you can not to do that because it takes the it takes the real work out of the shoulder elbow and wrist and then this is doing the work rather than this and we want it all to be focused here so as much as I can I'll try and keep myself nice and upright Suspended from the crown point. Nice and upright. And when you first start to do this, you may become aware that there are quite a few tight areas running through the arm. That's okay, they'll start to loosen up soon. And then finally, we come to do two together. There are numerous ways you can do this. We're only going to look at one and do it both ways. And let's uh, start off with the fingers pointing towards the belly. And I'm going to take the hands out, tucking these fingers in, just like I did on the first one. Okay. So I tuck the fingers in. Sweep around. Tuck the fingers now here. And I keep doing that. So you'll notice that one hand is tucking and going this way, which was the first way we did. The other hand is doing the offering out to the front. Okay. So they're both doing each direction at the same time. One's doing one direction and one's doing the other direction. Again, trying to feel your spine is upright, head balanced, and we switch directions. Now we take these fingers in, boom, spin around, take these fingers in, and keep going. Got to see you're looking really good there, it looks perfect. Okay. So that's balancing the bowls of soup. Okay. And that's the one that causes most people many problems. Okay. But not you, obviously. Maybe someone you know. Okay. Um, the only other one that causes people problems is the one shoulder forward, one shoulder back. But with a little practice of each and spending a little bit of time focusing on those exercises, they'll soon become more natural feeling and easy to perform. And you'll soon get the hang of it. Okay, thank you.